Today, it's time to figure out how Kubernetes actually runs containers on nodes. Let's check it out. With a whole universe of things to learn, it's important to start with the essentials. Let's go over the concepts that make Kubernetes usable, scalable, and just downright awesome. Are you ready? So with all of our conversation about how pods run our containers, I figured it would make sense to talk about nodes, which means it's time to figure out what are nodes? That's an important topic. The simple way of looking at it is that a node is a virtual or physical machine that you run your workloads on. Wow, that's pretty straightforward. And I know that in Kubernetes, we operate on clusters, which are you know groups of one or more worker nodes. But in order to get the automation that Kubernetes provides, I'm sure nodes are more than just any old virtual or physical machine, right? Exactly. Each node actually contains the services necessary to run pods. A container runtime for running containers. A kubelet for making sure that everything that should be running is. And the kube proxy for handling networking. Aha! So that's how Kubernetes keeps track of pods. That also explains how pods get IP endpoints and other necessary features for running at scale, like you know being able to attach to a running pod for debugging. Yep. Now, if we had to manually manage all of the pods on each node, it would be impossible to handle. That's one of the most important reasons Kubernetes exists. The way Kubernetes actually manages these pods is through what's called the control plane. The control plane is responsible for handling all of these details by exposing an API. This is where Kubernetes can define, deploy, and manage the lifecycle of our pods. Right, there's a lot going on in the control plane. Let's look at some of the components that make up the control plane and what they do. First, there's the API server itself, which handles data validation and configuration for all of the API objects. Next, there's etcd, which is a key value store for holding onto all the important data that Kubernetes uses. Plus, there's the scheduler. Here's where the important decisions get made about where exactly a pod will run. The scheduler can look at the available resources for all the nodes and make sure that a pod goes to a node that can handle it. And don't forget about the controller manager, where the core Kubernetes logic happens. One of the big responsibilities here is lifecycle management, to make sure all the various pieces are working correctly. Similarly, there's the Cloud Controller Manager, which lets Kubernetes hook into cloud providers. So if you're running Google Kubernetes Engine, the Cloud Controller Manager is what speaks to Google Cloud when something is needed, like a new virtual machine for a node. Having that abstraction from dealing with the individual details of each cloud provider sure sounds nice. Wow, the control plane is responsible for a lot. But with all of that, how do you actually declare the details to Kubernetes? That's where the Kubernetes API comes in. Let's try it out in the next episode. So that's how Kubernetes does all the things that it does. If you're going to deploy a container, you'd make a pod that uses your container. You'd make sure Kubernetes has nodes, and then it, it figures out the rest. That's right. The kubelets on the nodes are watching what's going on on the node itself. So when the control plane needs to schedule a pod on that node, both the control plane and the node itself have enough information to make sure it works. Plus, if a pod runs into an issue, the control plane will work with the kubelet to remove the unhealthy pod and replace it with a new one. Wow, that was a lot of great info on nodes, but now it's time to take a deeper dive into the Kubernetes API. All right, stay tuned, everybody. If you want to get hands-on, check out the link in the description. And if you enjoyed the episode, subscribe for more.